The Soviet Union was one of the first countries to realize the unique potential of parachute forces. As early as 1927, there were reports of parachute troops being used against bandits in Central Asia. Within the next two to three years, Colonel Leonid Grigorovich Minov began to organize the first military parachute units. In a parallel development, General Mikhail Tuhachevsky, commander of the Leningrad Military District, began theorizing about and honestly exploring the plausibility of using airborne troops. Tuhachevsky was one of a group of far-sighted Soviet military officers who developed the concept of deep battle. This military concept seemed ready-made for the employment of parachute troops. The earliest Soviet involvement with parachute operations went through several phases of development. This was especially true with air delivery techniques. As with many novel deployments in military planning, airborne troop theory outpaced the practical aspects of plane design and implementation. The first paratroopers exited their transport plane by climbing through a hole on the top of the fuselage. They then had to crawl along the spine before making their way out along a wing. From the wing, the paratroopers rolled off and deployed their parachutes using a ripcord system. Stalin's military purges of the late 1930s robbed the Red Army of its top leadership. The parachute force was especially hit hard and lost virtually all of its leadership down to about the rank of major. Included in the first round of purges was Tuhachevsky himself, who was executed on June 12, 1937. By June 1941, there were five airborne corps in the Red Army, each consisting of about 10,000 troopers. On June 22, 1941, Germany launched its invasion of the Soviet Union, codenamed Operation Barbarossa. More than 3 million German and Axis troops invaded the Soviet Union along a 2,900-kilometer long front. It was Germany's largest invasion force of the war, representing some 80% of the Wehrmacht and one of the most powerful invasion forces in history. German forces initially moved quickly along the vast front, taking millions of Soviet soldiers as prisoners. By the end of August, German panzer divisions were just 350 kilometers from the Soviet capital. To highlight the sense of desperation, there have been stories recounting the fact that the Soviets dropped paratroopers into the snow without parachutes. This is in fact known to have happened on at least two occasions. The first was in Finland. The second was during the Viesma operation. In both cases, the planes were flying low and slow and the drops were made into deep snowdrifts. In the Viesma operation, there is even a mention that some of the paratroopers were wrapped in burlap sacks before they were dropped. Even data is given on the losses during the landing in such conditions. Only 12%. On October 5, 1941, after the Germans broke through the front lines to Moscow was opened, along the Warsaw Highway in the direction of Yuchnov, a German motorized column of 200 tanks and 20,000 infantry in motor vehicles was moving at full speed. They had about 200 kilometers to Moscow. On their way, there were only Soviet students of the military school, cadets of two military schools, Podolsk, about 3,500 people and paratroopers of Captain Ivan Georgievich Starchak, only 430 people. Of the 430 people, only 80 were experienced paratroopers, Another 200 were from frontline air units and 150 newly arrived recruits. They made sorties to the rear of the enemy. They destroyed bridges, burned trucks, tanks, cars, seized and destroyed many weapons and ammunition from the enemy. The enemy called his squad White Death. On October 7th, the Germans sent considerable forces from the flanks of the detachment to surprise Russian paratroopers and further defense became meaningless. Starchak decided to withdraw. On the same day, the battery of the artillery school came to them, and then the detachment of tanks arrived. By that time, 29 men of paratroopers remained in the detachment. All were awards to the Order of the Red Banner and Starchak to the Order of Lenin. From the Soviet perspective, this fighting in the Vyazma Yuchnov area was an overwhelming victory in the defense of Moscow. As the German drive against Moscow slackened, the Soviet commander on the Moscow front, General Georgi Zhukov, on December 6, inaugurated the first great counteroffensive, putting the Germans on the defensive and forcing them into retreat.